letters these drugs now let me let me tell you what are the name of the drugs which are present in this inodilators inodilators they include enamrinone they include milrinone and the other drug in this inodilators include vesnanirone so these are the drugs which are present in this group this is vesnari known so enamrinone milrinone and as well as vesnarinone are the group of drugs which are present in this inodilators there is another name for this enamrinone which is called as amrinone previously it was called as amrinone now now why are these called as inodilators these are called as inodilators because it has two properties it has the inotropic property and it also has the vasodilatory property so that is why these are called as the inodilators now now these are causing the inotropicity inotropicity is they are increasing the contractility of the myocardium now let me discuss how they will increase the myocardial contractility and let me discuss how they will cause the vasodilatation so let me discuss the mechanism of action of these particular drugs so what exactly these drugs will do is these drugs will inhibit an enzyme that is called phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme now where is this phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme required we have a substance called as adenosine triphosphate this adenosine triphosphate in the presence of enzyme adenylate cyclase in the presence of enzyme ac stands for adenylate cyclase in the presence of this adenylate cyclase the atp is converted into cyclic amp now this cyclic amp in the presence of enzyme phosphodiesterase 3 is converted into adenosine monophosphate in the presence of enzyme phosphodiesterase 3 cyclic amp is converted into adenosine monophosphate now what are these drugs doing these drugs they are inhibiting this phosphodiesterase 3 now once this phosphodiesterase 3 is inhibited what will happen the cyclic amp level increases so there will be increase in the cyclic amp in the blood vessels and as well as increase in the cyclic amp within the heart now this particular increase the cyclic amp what it will do is within the heart the increased cyclic amp within the heart this increased cyclic amp within the heart will increase transmembrane will increase the transmembrane influx of calcium will increase the transmembrane in influx of the calcium so that means the calcium levels are increasing once the cyclic amp levels are increasing now what does this increased calcium do this increased calcium within the heart will increase the myocardial contractility will increase the myocardial contractility whereas the same increase in transmembrane calcium in the vascular smooth muscle will cause vasodilatation 
So basically what is this inodilators doing? Inodilators are inhibiting the phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme. Once the phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme is inhibited, the cyclic AMP level increases. It increases both in the blood vessels and as well as the heart. Within the heart, the increased cyclic AMP will increase the transmembrane influx of the calcium. This increased transmembrane influx of the calcium will increase the myocardial contractility. Whereas, this increased transmembrane influx of the calcium within the vascular smooth muscle will cause the vasodilatation. Now, where is this vascular smooth muscle within the blood vessel? Within the blood vessel, we have three layers. The innermost layer will be tunica intima. Middle layer will be tunica media. The third layer, the outermost layer will be tunica adventitia. Within this tunica media, we have the vascular smooth muscle. So within the vascular smooth muscle, if the calcium level increases, then there will be vasodilatation. So this is the mechanism of action by which the inodilators will cause increase in the myocardial contractility that is inotropicity will cause the vasodilatation and thereby the cardiac output increases because of increase in the inotropicity. The afterload on the heart decreases because of the vasodilatation. Next point, these drugs, they are used for short term intravenous injections of in a patient with severe and refractory heart failure. So in a patient with severe and refractory heart failure, we use this particular inodilators but the problem with these inodilators the major adverse effects this will be an important mcq here remember the major adverse effects with these inodilators will be thrombocytopenia that is decrease in the platelet count but this particular thrombocytopenia is more common with your enamrinone than milrinone right this is more common with enamrinone but it is very rare with milrinone so that is the reason why what we give in these patients with the refractory congestive heart failure we give milrinone rather than enamrinone because enamrinone will cause this thrombocytopenia that is decrease in the platelet count and remember, both of these drugs, your enamrinone and as well as milrinone, both of them, they can cause arrhythmias. Right? Both of these drugs can cause arrhythmias. Now, we have one more important drug, which is called levosimendon. which is called levosimendon. What this levosimendon will do is, it will inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme. That is, as the inodilators, they are inhibiting this phosphodiesterase enzyme, even your levosimendon will also inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme. But there is an added advantage for this levosimendon. Levosimendon will sensitize the myocardium to the calcium. So the second effect is it will sensitize the myocardium to calcium. So when Levosimendon is sensitizing the myocardium to the calcium, thereby whenever you give Levosimendon, what will happen? The inotropicity further increases compared to that of your inodilators. So it is having an added mechanism of action compared to that of inodilators. Inodilators, they are only inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzyme. But levosimendon 
apart from inhibiting the phosphodiesterase enzyme, it is also sensitizing the myocardium to the calcium and thereby it will further increase the myocardial contractility.